Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the Customizing Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Barbosa, and today I'm joined by a special guest, Cheryl Kuchek of Sublimation Summit. Cheryl, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to join us today. Oh, thank you for having me. This is really wonderful, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Um, my name is Cheryl Kuchak with Sublimation Summit. Um, I also have a Facebook group, um, Sublimation for Beginners and Beyond, and Sublimation for Beginners and Advanced, and well, the rest is all the other groups We're that I have. We're going to unpack all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So one thing that's super interesting about you is that you have probably among all of our guests that we've had on this podcast, you have probably the deepest and most rich history with sublimation. Uh, so hmm. if you don't mind, can you kind of, before we get into sublimation, I'm super curious, like what was kind of like your pre sublimation background? Like before you kind of got into this industry, um, you know, kind of what was your background before that? Oh, this is really interesting. Um, so I owned a commercial collection agency and that is I, um, the, it would be business to business. So I was collecting for companies um, that weren't paying their other businesses. And so I would, I, it was an amazing business. Actually, I did it for 15 years, loved it. Um, Made a lot of money at it, thank, thankfully. <laughs> and then I sold it. Nice. So, okay. Yeah. And did that did that kind of segue you into sublimation, or what? What kind of happened in the in between? Oh, um, actually, um, I started. I I was doing. I so I I taught myself how to sew. Um, I wanted to make my children clothes when they when they were little. And, um, and then I got into embroidery and, um, and along the way I found vinyl. And, um, so I did vinyl, um, after, and I think I started doing vinyl, um, probably right when I sold my business, I wanted to, I wanted to have something. And so I, I got a silhouette cutter and, you know, started doing paper crafts and vinyl and, and then one day, <laughs> but we'll talk about that. <laughs> awesome. So, so I was going to ask, like, did you have creative outlets before sublimation? But yeah, it sounds like, so you're, you're a crafty person. Were you kind of always crafty or that's something you discovered after, after the business sold? You know, I, it's funny because I wouldn't describe myself as a crafty person. Which, which is really, I yeah. beg to do. I think many of us would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I, I think um, it was. Um, I, I think I, I, you know, it's the left brain, right brain kind of thing, and um, you mm. know, maybe the ADD. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I loved doing certain things. Um, um, if I didn't have to keep doing it over and over and over again, like I don't, uh, you know, I don't want to make 150 t-shirts of the same thing. Got it. You know, Got it. So, yeah. So I want to, I want to make something and then I want to move on. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my little crafty. <laughs> so, and I, and, and I also love to learn. So, you know, if it's a new process, if it's something new, I want to jump in, you know, um, head first, get, ah, you know, <laughs> and then, yeah. And then, and then once I'm, you know, once I know it, I want to move on. I, it's except for sublimation. So sublimation that, stuff. That, it, I mean, it really did. It really, it really did. Yeah. yeah. It is definitely so then, a passion. Okay. So then what was your first sublimation printer? It was a GX seven thousand, and um, okay, yeah, nice. that was yeah, and that it's was the Rico, like right? yeah, it's the Rico, mm -hmm. yeah, the original oh. Rico, and then it was the um, the seventy one hundred. I got mm -hmm. uh, I 
ended up getting the 7100 and then i got a muto oh, one of the large formats muto. yeah i got the 40 44 inch muto oh wow. and, and <laughs> where did you i know <laughs> i know I mean, it was crazy. It was so crazy. I just, you know, I was at one of the shows and I'm like, oh, I, I got it. You know, I, I think I want this and I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. And yeah. um, I never really, I never really got, I, I'm sure it never paid for itself. I paid a lot of money for it. <laughs> yeah. Especially back then in the earlier days when everything, everything in sublimation was so much more expensive. Yeah, 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 that's right. And and um, to get into it, I remember um, it cost me about five thousand dollars when I first got into with the heat press and the printer, and it was like holy moly. But I was <laughs> so glad that I did it. I'm telling you, I somebody had told me they said my only regret in getting so in, into sublimation was that I got the smaller printer. I, if, if I had to do it again, I would get the larger printer. I'm like, well, that's it. I'm getting the larger printer. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's so true. We hear that all the time. And so uh, yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of, Hey, do what you can with what you have. If you can only afford like the smaller printer, go for it. You know, you could yeah. earn faster than you could save. So, but yeah. nevertheless, everybody always wishes they bought the bigger one. I know it's the truth. I mean, once, yeah. once you get into it, you, you really, you want to do more, have more, be more. I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're starting off on kind of just like a home amateur level. Did it, did you ever take a professional? Like were you opening up a shop or, or how did, how did your, your love or and passion for this kind of just develop? So, um, when I was doing vinyl, um, I had joined and this, you know, again, this is probably in 2009, maybe somewhere around there. Um, I had joined a group and it, it was, um, run by this gentleman who, um, I can't remember the, anyway, they, they were like, I, I hate to say this, but they were like tyrants. Um, in that group. And um, anyway, it, they had the largest group at the time. It was 22,000 people. I mean, they didn't have groups like that. Yeah. So they didn't have large um, Facebook groups back then like that. So this was, you know, he definitely thought he was all that in a bag of chips for sure. <laughs> and um, anyway, um, so I had gone in and asked a question Um you know, I was just starting out and I don't even remember what the question was. I just remember being so um, belittled and demeaned in the, the way that they were treating me because I asked a, a newbie question. Um, and people are like, oh, you know, did you did you search it? Did you do this? And, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm never asking another question again. I mean, I'm so done. I'm so done. And um, that would lend itself to the reason why I started a beginner's group. And um, to this day, I'm super protective of anyone who, I mean, my group is not like that. They, they just won't do it because, you know, I've had my group for, I was the first person to have a sublimation group. And if anyone goes and asks a question, I don't care if they ask the same question that's been asked a thousand times, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, it's a beginner's group for a reason. And that's what I tell people. This is a beginner's group for a reason. Yeah. I want to help people. And, um, having had that experience, it was, it was like, I never want anyone to feel like that ever in my groups. And, um, so I ended up starting a little crafters group on the side and, um, did my own little group and, um, and you know, that's actually how I got introduced to sublimation because somebody posted in my group 
And I was like, OMG, are you oh, kidding okay. me? Yeah, that's how I, so, that's so then how. The group, so then, now is this, this is before the sublimation specific group? It was a, like another. Oh yeah, group? this is way before. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Because we're going to talk yeah. about the sublimation group in a little bit. Uh, I <laughs> there. There's so much that I have to know about that. <laughs> so, but, but we're in the origin still. Okay. Yeah. So you're starting out. So has, yeah. has your experience in this industry just always been educational then from that? Like that's been like your position. I, I, you know, I think so. I mean, I just, I love helping people and, um, I just get a lot of joy helping somebody with their journey and to see them progress and, um, get excited about it. And I, I love it. I love taking somebody by the hand, if you will, and, yeah. and watching that happen. And it's just, it's, it's just awesome. So for me, um, yeah, I, I think that that's, that's the thing that keeps me going all the time is, um, you know, people will reach out and say things like you have no idea what you've done for me. And you, you know, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's why I do what I do and love yeah. it. <laughs> I love that. I had a very brief stint here. I've worn a lot of hats at Heat Press Nation. Uh, I've been working here about eight years. And for like a year, maybe two, I was in technical support. Uh, and that was like the best part of technical support was being able to, to talk to people. And like, when you answer the phone call, they know yeah. nothing. And they may as well have a paperweight on their workbench. And by the end of the call, now they could start their business because they know how to do it. And they, we troubleshoot the issues and get the print to stick and stuff like that. So I totally see what you're saying, how it's, it's just so yeah. satisfying. That's really it awesome. It is so satisfying. It is. It's, it's uh, you know, um, I think also, I think um, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. And, you oh, know, yeah. Yeah. um yeah, and I, I think it's really important for me that, um, you know, I was actually kind of saying this to you earlier about um, a conversation I had just last week with somebody that I said, if I sell anything, I sell truth. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's just, to me, if something, ev not every process is for people. You know, sublimation is not for yes. everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be, you know, and to tell somebody, oh, get into this, get into this because it's going to blah, 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 you know, whatever, change your life. It, they're not, that's not what they really want to do. They want to do, I'm, I'm just going to say they want to do t-shirts. That's what they want to do. They don't mm -hmm. want to do mugs. They don't want to do tumblers. They don't, they want to do t-shirts. Well, I'm going to tell them sublimation is really probably not the best way for them to go because, yeah. right? I mean, and, and they want to do dark t-shirts, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I host a weekly, and I guess shameless blog, we host weekly classes here at, at Heat Press Nation, virtual classes. And in the sublimation class, I'm like, it, I almost say what you just said, like, it's like, if you want to do like black cotton t-shirts, you could leave now, come back to my other class on like DTF or something. <laughs> Cause <laughs> submission's not right. for you. Right, right, exactly. And, and, but yeah. trying to sell somebody something or trying to sell them on sublimation when it's really not their jam, that's not really what they, then right. it's really, I mean, to me, it's like helping somebody kind of sort through those things to see what they really mm -hmm. are after. So I do I do one on one classes. So I, I I you know, I do trainings, I do one on one trainings and that's one of the first things that I do. I I want to I want to go through the process of the you know, what is it that you're after? What is your expectations? What are you you know, you're trying to um do dark t-shirts you know i have no idea how many people have asked me can i sublimate on a on a black t-shirt it's right. like a yeah. no-brainer right i mean you think oh how you know have you been living under a rock you know but <laughs> the truth is, because it's so second nature to us because we've done it forever 
Um, right. Somebody brand new doesn't know that. And so to be harsh with them, to go, oh, you know, you've been living under a rock, it's just wrong. So to me, it's like, right. yeah, that's, you, you can't do that. And if that's what you're after, this process probably isn't for you. And so I yeah. think that that's part of what I, I love doing is helping people sort through what it is that they're really after. And if they're after sublimation, I'm all over it too, because yeah. <laughs> it is my passion. <laughs> For I, sure. I love that, that you, I love that you love it. I, I'm a fellow heat press lover. I love all things heat transfer. After I start, and I tell this story all the time. So po podcast regulars, sorry, I'm going to say this story again. Uh, but yeah, when I started uh, working here, within a few weeks, I had thrown one of my checks right back at the company to buy my heat press, my Cameo. A few months later, I got my uh, my Snodgrass printer. And so like, yeah, I, I genuinely enjoy this stuff. And, and I yeah. think because we both, which leads me to a question that I do want to ask you. I think because we're both like, not only do we work here, is it our careers, but like we're fans. Is that, I mean, I, I feel like it's safe to say you're a fan of sublimation, right? Where do when, you see the industry? Like, like, what are your thoughts on the industry today? Like the state of sublimation? Yeah, so, um, and I think that's a really great question because um, it's definitely been shifted, right? I mean, when you, mm -hmm. when you, look, at, when you look at the industry today, um, so I have people say lots of things. So one, um, on one hand, they say, oh, it's saturated. There's no real good opportunities anymore because it's saturated. And then you have other people saying, oh, all these other things are taking, you know, um, people are now going after DTF. They're, you know, mm -hmm. they're not going after DTF. They are, they are stampeding T DTF, you know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, it's right. It's like, that's a whoa. Fair assessment. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's good news. I think that's really good news for people yeah. who really, you know, if you, if you have something and you're really passionate about it, your signature is what you put on that. Your signature is what, and when I say your signature, meaning your designs, your, you know, your personality that, that is in whatever it is that you're creating with sublimation, that's your signature that nobody else can, can have that, that identity. Nobody else can, I mean, they can maybe copy, you know, which I've had people do that. We can yeah, talk about that too. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. I mean, I've had actually vendors take my take my photos and use them to sell but that's another that's story fun. wow <laughs> it's okay it's all it's all good i called them on it it was it was good oh okay good, good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so i i think the industry right now is in um it's in a shift and um uh, again, I think it's great news. I think it's a great opportunity for us who are really passionate about sublimation. Um, I think the biggest mistake people make um, is that they they start chasing the rabbit. Mm. That's what I think yeah. ends up happening. They start, oh, oh, oh. You know, oh my God, DTF. Oh my God, um, lasering. Oh my God, this. Oh my God, that. Uh, oh, you know, oh, I got to have that. I got to have that. And they don't stay in their lane. And then they get confused. And then they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then if if you're there and you get confused, what 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 do you think your customers are getting? Yeah. Oh, confused. yeah. And, and then, then by the like, time you oh, realize oh, it, you're 10, 20,000 deep in equipment that you don't really know how to use or or even even don't use because it doesn't it's not what your customer base really wanted anyway yeah. so and there's nothing wrong with i mean there god knows i have a, a lot of equipment um <laughs> it, and that's the truth and um but i'm i was very clear so there was um 
a, a time that I was going to get a $40,000 UV printer. And this is probably, probably about five, six years ago. Um, and I went to Connecticut. I stayed there the whole day going through the training and um, put down $10,000 on it. And then um, I came home and I was like, this is not good. This is really, uh, I'm, <laughs> it's taking me away from what I love doing. It's taking, it's, I'm going to have to now spend hours and hours learning how to do this. Um, and so what I did was I upgraded my laser instead, which would complement my sublimation, not take away from it. Smart. Yeah. Smart. And, and again, I think, I think staying in your lane, you know, if when, because what happens when there's a shift in the industry, I mean, sublimation's not going away. Oh, you know, it's can, irreplaceable. No, because you can't really, well, first of all, DTF, right? Let's just big elephant in the room. DTF, you cannot use it for hard surface goods, period. So let's say you threw away your sublimation printer, you pick up a DTF, you just threw away all of your mugs, coasters, keychains, like all of that is gone. So yeah, yeah, you see, this never... is what you can't do. You can't do that. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that's a gorgeous plate, right? I mean, give me a break. I mean, it's like, you can't do this stuff. I mean, it's amazing to so me. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I love what I get to do. And you know what, Jared, this is the truth. I mean, I still, so I, when I did this plate, I was like, O M G when I took the paper off, like, it's like, Oh my yes. God, that is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything else, anything that I get to do that with it, yeah. uh, any other process. It's like, and so oh my God too, by the way, yeah. people, yeah, I, I think we underestimate how fast sublimation is because sometimes I'm saying, and this is not to, again, not to knock it, but we're just kind of comparing processes here. Sometimes yeah. you're there, even if DTF could go on a mug, you'd be there three, five minutes for one print or a sublimation, yeah. Yeah. boom, 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 it's done, you know? So yeah, so there, there's so many things about sublimation. It's not going anywhere. than just kind of complementing the process, right? Like incorporating other Absolutely. processes. Because you do laser and you were saying how oh, yeah. the laser complements your sublimation. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Because lasering is so new for a lot of people, myself included. Like how, how, how kind of are you using that in your shop? Oh my gosh. First off, it's, you know, it, it it's really your, your imagination. My, my, corporation's name is just my imagination designs because it we're limited only by what we can imagine. And, um, I, you know, at the time I had gone to, I had gone to one of the shows, MBM or something. And, um, of course I see the, you know, the lasers, it was, um, Trotec and Epilogue and, you know, you see all these things, but they don't have sublimation in them that neither one of them, but there is Unisub hardboard, and I was like, oh, my God, the things that I could do, it would be amazing. I could incorporate, blah, 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 and which I have. I certainly have. So I bought, I want to say my first laser was um, a Trotec, and I think I bought it maybe 10 years ago nine years ago, something like that. And, um, um, and I, and obviously I went crazy with, with, <laughs> um, all things like I'll show you this. So this is something I did. So, um, this is incorporating Ooh, okay. services. Yeah. So this is, um, you know, a hard, hardboard, you know, sub hardboard. And then I made the fork and knife as the hands with it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And, yeah. So you, you can do, you can do so much with, 
with a, um, you know, a laser. I mean, so much and yeah. sublimation. That's so and crazy because that's for sure something that you could never buy. Like nobody has those. That's exactly right. But you're able to make it. That's crazy. That's right. That's cool. And you can do so many unique things um, that nobody else can do because – Nobody else has, again, your signature, your, your, the way that you think your creativity, they don't have that. So, um, I literally am selling, um, these, I, I'm, I sell to these resorts and you can't believe the stuff that I'm selling and I don't have it here. Um, but I'm making these hardboard, I'm selling these hardboard, um, items that I'm selling. It's probably costing me, I think it's like a dollar twenty-five. Um and I'm selling it to them for ten dollars and they're selling it for twenty dollars. It's so wow. easy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah, happy it awesome. takes me it takes me like no time um to do it. And they love it. They're going crazy over it. Like, oh my God, this is great. Um, I love, I love what I get to do. I absolutely love what I get to do. And I, I feel like um, every day is a new day to be able to come up with something, whether it is, um, and it, I, <laughs> if anything, like I have all these ideas that run wild in my head, you know, it's like, Oh, I got to <laughs> yeah. write that down. Oh, I got to write that down. It's so funny. I will be dreaming about it and wake up and jump out of bed. Oh my God, I got to write that idea down. So, and, <laughs> and usually it's about cutting out hardboard on my laser because I love it. Now, I and love it. it after, right? Yep. Yep. You cut it. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. cut out the shape, whatever. But you know, like um, I got these frames. I got these frames for like pennies and I loved them. And so I was able to cut out the hardboard to fit into there. Um, I have all kinds of different shapes of these that, you know, oval ones, where are you going to get an oval shape to be able to fit into? Right. But I can make it a custom. Yeah. That's right. And, and and now it's a unique piece that somebody else can't offer because they don't have what I have. So, it, it, I mean, it's amazing. Right. So I would tell you that lasers are, um, they're, they're awesome. They are really amazing. And, um, and I think when you use mixed media with sublimation, and you come up with all kinds of things. Like I did, um, I I did um, a mug with some bling on it. Um, there's I, nice, I do nice. all kinds of yeah. I'm always doing something, you know. Um, so I've added bling to the chandelier, and this is a little nightlight, oh. and I added bling to it. So Isn't it's like awesome? 3D. Like, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. That's the kind of stuff. And I think, again, I think thinking outside of the box is everything. I mean, it really is. And just, um, you know, um, if you if you can think it, try it. Mm -hmm. What What's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah. Oh, well, I broke it. Oh, it didn't work. Oh. Okay, it's all right, you know. Yeah, have fun. And, and now you have the knowledge. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> like like Thomas Edison. He's like, well, I've tried. I think it was like a thousand or ten thousand things he tried before. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now yeah. I know a thousand things that don't work. Right. And now when exactly. people join your group, you could tell them, nope, that won't work. I already tried it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And even even then, I try not to tell people, like you know, because maybe they are going to be able to get it to work where I couldn't. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I share my experience always, but you know, I also 
say, go for it. It's okay. You know, <laughs> that's always my response when people ask if they could stitch together multiple submission prints uh, to, to get one larger thing. And then I tell them, look, I have yet to be able to figure that out, but I've seen enough YouTube videos of people who did it to where go for it. I can't do it, but go for it. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it either. I, I, but I'll tell you what I can do, um, which you probably can too. Um, I can take a full sheet of, you know, say the Epson F570. I can take a, you know, a, a 20 by 20 piece and I can, I can press it twice and not have any issues of variance oh, okay. in colors. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I, I, yeah. So I can do that. So I can do two presses on something and not have any color variations like so. side by side like press one section then the next section yep. or like an overlapping yep. no it's, oh, it's a yeah yeah so i press like you know just a you know a 10 by 20 whatever and then do it again you know i mean it's like if i had a 20 um i don't know a 20 by 12 sheet of um aluminum or whatever and i want mm -hmm. to press it uh, i print th that image on my f570 and i you know obviously you can't do well we could do it uh 16 by 20 so we could but let's just say it's 24 inches whatever or right. or you have a smaller heat press yeah or a smaller heat press exactly but I would say, so that brings up a point. <laughs> um, um, I am, um, I very much believe in good quality heat presses and printers and, you know, quality definitely makes a difference. There's no doubt about it. 100%. And yeah. And if you have, if you, if you have a junk heat press, you can expect some junk to come out. Yeah. And I, I, I have shared this countless, countless, countless times in my group because there was a lady who bought, um, she had bought a, a cheap Chinese heat press. Yeah. And from the, from the bargain, those bargain websites. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And then, and, you know, and, and it did fine for vinyl. Sure. Well, then, so she got into sublimation and she wanted to get good results like we were getting. And her, it was, it was dull. It was so dull. Mm -hmm. And so she ended up buying a George Knight 16 by 20 heat press and she... <laughs> nope. I mean, it, I mean, it was not even a fair comparison for goodness sakes, but if you see, and again, I posted this countless times in my group showing people the difference between what you're going to get the results versus having a good heat press. And it is important. It is. Um, and again, if you're going to get into it, then do it right. That's yes. my advice to anyone. If you're going to do it, get the right, get the right printer, the right heat press, the quality, um, you know, substrates. Um, and then you can expect some really great results. Yeah. You could do it right. Or you could do it twice. Like, that's, Oh, love it. Love yeah, it. <laughs> we, we, we say that a lot here because we, we get calls from, from both people, people who are like, why should I buy an HPN heat press over an Amazon press for half the price? And then we're like, hey, you could buy, you could do it right. Or you could do it twice. Like you could, you're going to buy it. one of ours anyways. Would you like to preface that <laughs> with an additional purchase? And then we get the well, other. And, and you know, do you want a paperweight? Because that's fine because yeah. that's ultimately what's going to end up happening is you're going to have a paperweight um that you're gonna end up um you know paying somebody to take away for you yeah we get so many calls like hey I, and i don't want to say brands or, or anything but it's like right hey, right, right this heat press and you know it's all the 
you know, under two, three hundred dollar presses. He's, you know, whatever, right? Hey, I got this press from this place. Like, it stopped working, and I need a new one fast. Like, and we get those. Or can you help me? Can you help me? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I need instructions on how to how to use this press yeah and it's like oh my god are you guys so you know we're we're always like we'll go back to the manufacturer oh they don't exist yeah. okay or you know what's okay. wild is we actually get phone calls and this is 100 percent fact we get phone calls because people will google the manufacturer and our they'll put our phone number in their whatever on the i don't know how it works but basically google will list our phone number in place of whatever manufacturing really? they're searching. Yeah. So we get calls we're like, wait, you're not this company. I'm like, no, we're heat press nation. Uh, but you, oh, and wow. then be like, but you have to sell this. I'm like, we don't, sorry. <laughs> like, and I feel bad. Cause you know, these poor people are out of a heat press and they got our number from Google. Cause they're, I, maybe they're looking up heat presses or, or whatever, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, but I found your Wild. number here and I'm like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> buy it right or buy it twice. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, so, That's great. Man, I, I love your passion for sublimation. Uh, I feel like I share a similar passion just for heat pressing. I, I, again, broken record, bought my stuff like almost right out of the gate. Like I, I was hooked because I've always been a creative person. Uh, I'm a musician, uh, you know, and so being able to to just find another creative outlet for me was really exciting and that's why and i think that's why we connect so good is like you like you're very similar it's like you found it and you're like yes this is it this is these are my people so you do a lot for sublimation education and if it's okay with you i'd really love to kind of just just expand on that a little bit like if, okay i would say and you correct me if i'm wrong it's like a passion for like education, right? Oh yeah. Like what oh, kind yeah. of drives that for you? It, were you, were you? I have to ask, were you ever a teacher? Like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. It really is funny because when I was a child, um, I used to teach my teddy bears. <laughs> <laughs> that is <Seriously>. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would have three or four of them, you know, and they'd be sitting there, and some would get an A, and some would get a D or whatever. Um, and it's funny because I wanted to be a teacher, and um, I didn't, but I wanted to be. That's what I wanted to do, and um, I don't. Um, it's so funny. Um, I don't necessarily look at myself as a teacher, more of an educator and somebody who, um, you know, um, I, I really want to help people on their journey. And yeah. I think because I love it so much, I, I want them to do it right so that they will love it too. Because if you mm -hmm. do this right, there's no, I mean, I just can't imagine somebody not loving this. I, I, I really can't. Um, of all the processes that I do, there is nothing like sublimation. Yeah. And, and, and I do a lot. I mean, I really, I love <laughs> yeah. my laser and I, you know, and I will say I, I love lasering, but it's not, it's not sublimation. It's just yeah. not. There's, you know, that, that awe that you get when you take off that, you know, that paper and you look at it and it's like, you know, it just pops off the, the, you know, like this, you know, it's like, how can you yeah. like, where, where can you get this? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, oh my God, that it's amazing. It's so amazing. And that to me, that's the stuff that just um, gets me every single time. And, you know, as long as I've been doing it, I'm still in awe every time I'm taking off that, that paper and yeah. going, <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Or, you know, you do slates or anything. It doesn't even matter. You, yeah. there, there's just nothing like it. Yeah. And I, I remember doing vinyl. And um, I was selling vinyl. I would sell, um, I would do um, glass cutting boards because I, I always had 
a bend towards hard substrates. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would do like um, cutting boards and tile and I would cringe. I would be selling it. And, um, and I remember I sold this, um, it was an engagement one on, on a tile and it was like, like a, a, a 12 inch tile. And they were like, oh, I love it so much. And I was cringing like, I hate it. Like I can't, there's gotta be a better, there's gotta be a better process. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so serious. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I was blown away the day that I saw sublimation and I'm like, oh my God, I have to do that. I don't know what that is. I just have to have it. I've got to do it. And you know, it's just one of those things. I think when it, when it grabs you, yeah. It grabs, I mean, it grabbed me. It honestly, you know, um, David Gross used to call it, um, he drank the Kool-Aid until. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, for me, yeah. that Kool-Aid was served in a mug. That So I was in training and I had already made a few t-shirts and it was the part. So, well, let me say this. It wasn't really training. It was one of the other sales guys said, hey, you need to know what you're talking about. Let's go make a t-shirt. Because my training was all YouTube. Like for you know, <laughs> yeah, this is eight years yeah. ago, we were such a so much smaller than we were. There was up. no, there was no education out there really to speak of. Yeah, you know, when I got into it, there was like, I mean, Condi had some mm -hmm. um, videos, but not not a lot. And there was, it was, um, it definitely was not. I didn't even know, honestly, I didn't even know Condi had t um, videos. Yeah. So when I started doing it, I didn't know that. So yeah, it was definitely learning on my own. Yeah. And so, <laughs> so I had seen some of the condi videos. I'd seen the mugs, but you see it and you're like, oh, that's probably cheap. It's, you know, cause you, it's just YouTube, right? So then yeah, finally yeah, yeah. he, so he says, okay, today we're, and it's already, I'm already working like a few weeks, right? <laughs> He's like, okay, have you ever made a mug before? And I was like, no, I never made a mug. And he goes, okay, well today you're making a mug. So we make one. First thing I do, I'm holding the blank and I'm like, oh, this actually is nice. Like, this is not, I don't know, made of cardboard. I don't know. <laughs> so, so we get this picture and I don't remember what the picture was. It was just, it could have even been a stock picture. We get this picture, heat press it to the mug. We peel it and I'm looking and I'm like, wait, this looks really good. Like, and then after it cooled, he goes, scratch it. And I was like, and he goes, dude, go get the, go get a, like a, the you know the sponge like get the heart go get the heart yeah, 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 yeah. so we're doing all these things and it, and it's holding and he goes and then he takes me to his desk he goes dude i've had this mug for like two years and i'm like it still looks good and so that was my true sublimation like experience where i was like oh why doesn't everybody do this this is perfect like yeah you know, so yeah, yeah so that was that was my that was my kool-aid moment <laughs> Yeah, well, for for me, it was um, the first thing I think I pressed was um, hardboard, and I was blown away. I was just mm -hmm. blown away. Like, this is like, you know, the colors just completely pop, and it's like, yeah. holy cow, this is this is like nothing. I, it's what I've always wanted to do, and I didn't know what process it was, but you know, I just knew that there had to be something better than mm -hmm. vinyl on a mug. It, that just really bothered me, you know, or, or vinyl on a, on a, on a wine glass or whatever. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. There just has to be. And yeah. there, I mean, and then there was sublimation. There you go. <laughs> and then the heavens opened up. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> and it, it has, it has, um, you know, that passion has never left me. I mean, the love for it, the love for sublimation is just, you know, it's just yeah. in me. Yeah. And I love how that passion has just shown its face or not shown its face, but like it's materialized into different things uh, earlier. Now, which I think is really cool. I think I had mentioned that you started one of the first Facebook groups, but no, that is that statement is not true. You That's started right. the first sublimation group. Exactly right. So That's exactly right. Yep. You, you shared a little bit about how I got started, but if you could just kind of expound on like, and, and also for the people watching, like what could they find in this group? 
how did it really take mm -hmm. off? Like kind of share the story about the group. Cause I think it's fascinating. So, um, I, w I had, so I had left the other group, the, the, the mean girls group. I, <laughs> and then I did go back and join it at one, you know, later, but only for, you know, inspiration, if you will, certainly not to ask a question. And then I had started my own little crafters group and that's when somebody had, had, shared a sublimation tile or something. And I just was like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. And <laughs> so I then I, um, um, I started posting. So I was getting all these things and I'm posting it in the group. And so the other people that were not doing sublimation were you know, they weren't too happy. It's like, oh, this is a vinyl group and this is a, you know, but it mm. really wasn't. It was a crafters group. I never called it a vinyl group. But anyway, so I said, okay, that's fine. I'll go start a sublimation group. And so um, there was 25 of us and two of us are were doing sublimation. And um, which was so crazy when I think back now, um, and then because people didn't even know the word sublimation, yeah. <laughs> they didn't know how to say the word. Sublimation. They still don't know how to say that word sometimes. <laughs> I know it's true. It's true. And I, and I still run into that sublimation, sub, sub, <laughs> sublimination, you know, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. All this stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and not to make fun, but it's right. Uh, right. It's, you know, <laughs> anyway, so, um, um, then it just started growing. Um, and then I, um, and I don't know, probably a year into it. So my original group was named sublimation for beginners. And then I had somebody go and start another sublimation for beginners group. Took like the name. Cat? Yeah. Oh, geez. Oh yeah. Oh, you have no idea. Oh. You have no idea. <laughs> oh man. I've been I've been in, in this for a minute. Um, I actually there are three groups, sublimation for beginners and beyond, because they literally copied my name. Wow. Yeah. And one of them says sublimation for beginners and beyond without so many rules. And I always laugh at that. I don't you know, um, I, I have the standards that I don't bend and, um, and we could talk about that. Cause, uh, um, well, uh, I feel you know, like, um, we, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I, I was about to say like, I feel like, like those standards that you set, like it's for the value of the group. Like, I feel like that's what makes your group so valuable. Oh, um, 100%. And I agree. Yeah. We don't have drama. We don't have anything like that at all. Nothing. I mean, we're, you know, I don't have a bunch of cussing. I don't have any of that stuff in my group. And 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 I think because I've had the group for so many years, people just there's a level of respect in there, um, and a level of trust. And um, um, there was a time when, and if anyone does start drama, we we help them out the door because yeah. it's just not it's not what we represent it's not what we and you know um and no i've had anything from that either like i feel like when people start going in and flaming or why'd you do it like this you should have done it like that no one's actually learning everyone's just getting upset so there's not really yeah. a benefit to that anyways i and you know to be honest i don't even um i i am so busy doing what i do that i don't have time for all the petty stuff but i hear lots of things that happen like sometimes people will screenshot things and go oh did you see the drama here i don't i don't do drama i don't like drama so we don't really have it but i guess some of these places have quite a bit of you know it's like a <laughs> it's like a show <laughs> <laughs> Probably much like the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
Uh, that's not ours. Ours is definitely more of an educational based. Um, um, and I would tell you that people, um, people come to our group um, and we always have new people joining, but um, we're very selective as to who gets in our group. So that's probably another thing that we do. I never was about just having a bunch of numbers. I wanted to have quality. And um, so we vet people. I don't do it anymore. I mean, I have, you know, um, assistants that help, but I don't really add people anymore. But, um, you know, we don't add people that, um, you know, uh, have a lot of cursing on their page. Yeah. It's not what we want. It's not what we represent. So we just don't add them, you know. Um, um, we don't ha add people that um, have a bunch of drama on theirs um, or have, you know, like, you know, they have um, real, uh, you know, they take stands against people and stuff. We don't, we just don't want any yeah. of that because, it, you know, if that's on your page, we know that that's what you're going to be bringing to the table. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we, we just don't do that, you know? So, and I mean, those are kind of the standards that we set. Um, and people also know, and I think because I've been around for so long that um, they come in um, a lot to say, you know, um, what equipment do you recommend? Um, you know, what, um, you know, uh, um, I usually have discounts in my group. And so, you know, they, they love those discounts and I usually get exclusive discounts. And so people love those and they, you know, that's a, that's a big selling point at that. And again, it's not something that we, um, you know, I don't know how out there it is, but um, apparently it is because people are referred to us quite a bit Um you know, I was re referred by this group or this person. And so, I mean, it's, I, I love it. I, I can tell you, I love helping people and I love helping um, them in that journey process and, um, you know, steering them in the right direction when it comes to buying quality equipment and um, printers and heat presses and mug presses. And, you know, should I get a mug press or should I, um, should I get a, a convection oven? And, yeah. You know, and, um, and, you know, to me, it, you know, um, I go through a little process with them. Um, so, you know, what's your budget? Uh, you, yes. know, huh? <laughs> You're right. you know, you yeah. know, so if they tell me, um, I have a hundred dollars, mm -hmm. um, what mug press. So then I say, no, that's probably not the way you want to go. Let, you know, um, look at a convection oven, look at, you know, this convection oven for now until you can sell enough and then you can get yourself a good mug press. Yeah. I mean, that's yep. the, you know, that's kind of the, the pathway that I take because, you know, I want them to be able to, to make mugs so that they can make money. But yeah. I also don't want them to buy a hundred dollar um, mug press that is not going to work for them. Right. And then they may not even have a chance to make money with it because it breaks. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but um, I have I have known people who have had fires in their homes because of a mug press because of the electrical starting a fire oh, or a heat press that geez. started a fire. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Yeah. But that is terrible. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's those kind of things. So you want to make sure that um, they understand, listen, if you're getting a hundred dollar heat press, um, you, you might really want to unplug that every single time that you're done using it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's our official stance on all electric equipment is like, Hey, when you're, if it's not in use, unless it's a printer, of course, printers stay plugged in. But for everything yeah. else, like, yeah, just right. unplug it when it's not in use. Um, especially because some things, even though they're turned off, they may still draw power. So save, save your, save on your electric bill. But yeah, there's stuff like that for sure. Um, man, to, to kind of move a little bit, still following that passion for education, I'm ready to talk about the big one. 
let's okay. talk about Subtle Mission <laughs> Summit because it's so impressive. Um, and yet it's still so accessible. Like uh, I, you, you shared, I don't know if I could share, we may have to cut this out, uh, but you shared that clip of the 2023 highlight. And then I know I'd seen a previous year highlight on YouTube and mm -hmm. it's just so impressive. So many things about it, but before, before we get deeper, for people who don't know exactly what Submission Summit is, could you give us kind of like the highlights or just, you know, kind of explain to everybody what it is? Yeah, so I'll I'll kind of give you the background of how it all started. Um, so um, I actually was having a conversation with a, a vendor, um, and again, I you know I'd been working with almost all of the vendors, um, you know, Coastal, Condi, Johnson Plastics, um, JDS, and anyway, so I had been. Um, having a conversation with one of the one of the vendors and I said, you know, I really want to do a conference. I want to, you know, I want to just, you know, that that sublimation, you know, just strictly sublimation and um and so he said, you know, I think that'd be a great idea. And so, you know, I I wrestled with the how you know, I, yeah. I saw the need, but I, I, so I wrestled with it and the, and for me, the need was, and it still is the need, um, the, the need is still there and it will probably always be there. Yeah. And that yeah. is to, to be educated correctly. There's, you know, um, one of the, one of the things that I have seen, I mean, this is absolutely hysterical and I wish I would have kept it, but, um, so there was a lady that probably started sublimation and I want to say she said six months because that was her post in my group. Um, but she was now teaching. She was, she oh, was, nice. yeah. And she was charging, I want to say 65 or $75 for a class on sublimation on her page. Yeah. That's hey. I should do that. And <laughs> her and her and it was hilarious to me because and her, her post in our group was um she she was so frustrated she wanted to throw the printer away because she couldn't get it to work and she was having color issues and she was having whatever and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, okay, you're offering classes <laughs> and you're in here ranting, frustrated because you can't get your colors right and you're you're out there teaching. And it, she said in her post that she had been doing sublimation for six months. Wow. That's that's the stuff that has always bothered me because I, you know, I feel like, um, you know, again, I think you said it, you um, either do it right or do it twice yeah. or three times or four times <laughs> yeah. or, yeah. or you just completely get out of it because you don't know how and you're frustrated and you're tired of wasting money on substrates and throwing money away and right. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want... I so my desire is to show people and to teach people how to do it the correct way the first time. Mm -hmm. And um so so um with that um I again um contacted the you know my vendors and said um what do you think about this and one vendor said um you know Cheryl you know we we really care about you we don't we don't want to see you lose money and um you know you it was almost like i think he i think he thought that somehow i was um maybe wanting to compete with MBM at the time or or um um, ISS shows because that's what they were called back then. And, um, I said, not at all. That's not, I mean, it's not what I desire. I desire for people to be educated. We, we need to educate. And he said, well, you know, you're not the first person who has done this. 
Um, and the last guy lost $30,000. And I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> and at this point, at this point, I had signed um, a contract. I think I think I had signed the contract. I signed a contract for $125,000 commitment. Wowzers. I, and, and I did not tell my husband <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't tell my husband because Ooh. I knew he was not a risk taker. And I knew that, um, he would be, blown away like are you <laughs> kidding me if i didn't make this thing work i was going to be in big trouble yeah. and then so you know you have all these fears you have all these thoughts you have all like oh you know who, who's going to show up nobody's going to show up how do you know cheryl nobody i mean i, I mean they're going to spend all that money coming and then they're going to blah 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 you know and all the all the doubts all the fears all the and then he drops his bomb on me of well um and the, that guy lost $30,000. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, you know, all that was going on. And um, I, had, um, I had six weeks from the, time, from the time that I signed that contract to make it happen. Wow. You are a... You are a maverick. You are a risk taker. <laughs> um, so we, had 90, we had 92 classes. And that, that gentleman's name um, is, his name is Rich Zadonic. And uh, he, he was the president, or I think president of um, Romark at the time. And mm -hmm. um, he came to the show. He was there. I was so grateful. I was so grateful. Um, he came to the show and he said, he, him and his brother both, and he said, Cheryl, you rocked it. You rocked it. It was like, I can't even tell you, like there is nothing that could compare to that. But it, it was pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Still is amazing. Still love it. Uh, we're now on our sixth one, by the way. We'll be having a, yeah, a virtual um, summit this in the fall. And I'm super excited about that. But I want to go back to your question about, about the education and how it all began. Because the truth is that um, I think that that is what really matters in, in success of being able to produce a good product. And if you can produce yes. a good product, then you can also then sell a good product. And there are so many places because one of the things that I, I see over and over again is people say, I'm not creative. I can't design. I can't. That's why they have places like Creative Fabrica where mm -hmm. they have lots and lots and lots and lots of designs that you can just grab hold of. Yeah. Or even like, you know, I know something that's really just blown up in the past few years, like really blown up is a, a Canva. I was a Canva because oh, I'm a Photoshop amazing. guy. Yeah, I'm a Photoshop guy. So I was actually a Canva hater for so, okay. so long. And then okay. finally, uh, well, you, you've met Ronnie uh, yeah. here at HPN. And so finally she was like, dude, don't be dumb. Just try it. And then I tried it and I was like, well, now I'm sold. <laughs> Now I have the, I, I paid for the subscription and everything. So now I'm in, <laughs> but, but to your no. point, like there's, even if you're not quote unquote, not creative, that's fine. Can you make a good mug? And then what's cool about sublimation, which I love is once you nail the process, you could be 100% consistent forever. Like once you figure out how yes. to make a mug, that's it. You can just yeah. make good mugs all the time. Now you just follow that same process. As long as you have good quality oh. product because yes. you know I, I just have to say that <laughs> yeah I, you know because yeah. it, it, it's true that um that again um and and i will say this i mean one of the things that i i tell people all the time um and that is to keep a journal on times and temperature and all oh, of that so because smart. 
Yeah, because you want to know that process. You want to remember, and you think you're going to remember it. Oh, I got that. And then it's like, how the heck did I do that? At least that happens to me. <laughs> no, same. Yeah. So I have, I have, like, I have these booklets, like this one, like my Epson one, and I have one for laser, and I have one for um, just the different processes that I do sublimation, whatever, I'm always making sure that I'm jotting down what I'm doing because it's so easy to forget. Again, education, right? Yeah. Because yep. that's what this is about is educating people on good practices so that they can, they can succeed in this amazing industry. This is by far my favorite um, process. No, there's no doubt about it because there's nothing like this at all. Nothing, nope, nothing, nothing. Yeah. And especially <laughs> like nothing, when you say nothing like this, of course, there are other methods of full color on a hard substrate, but is this, is it as accessible as sublimation? Is it as easy? Is it as fast? No. And then there are I, certain I, things. I, I go back to this because there's no feel to this. Yeah. It's, yep. you know, other processes, you're going to feel it. Yes. And, and, and you can put this in the dishwasher. You can, you can put like, I can't tell you how many times this has been. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, that it's been in the, in the dishwasher. Oh it, yeah. There's no, there, you know, one of the reasons I decided not to get UV back, you know, five, six years ago was because you couldn't put the stuff in the dishwasher because mm, if it okay. got too heated up, you know, it would create a problem. So got I was it. like, wow. Okay. So uh, that's not cool. Every, every process has its limitations. Right. And we, we know right. that too, because sublimation is not for dark t-shirts sublimation. Right is only going to work on polyester shirts and you know i mean it, you can do the the 50 50 65 but you're going to you're going to have to um have it where it's like a retro shirt or whatever you know it's like, a like vintage, vintage faded shirt. yeah right exactly um so you know i mean there's there's ways to work around that if you will but for the most, that's our limitation. That mm -hmm. if there is a limitation to, and for me, shirts are not something that I was ever really big into, so it was not a big deal for me. Hard substrates, absolutely. Yeah, I can get passionate about it every single time. I, you know, just and again, like stuff like this. I mean, when you start, you know, really allowing yourself to to take it to the next level, if you will. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be whole drum, like, you know, okay, you know, I can only do this. Um, there's just so much you can do. I mean, that's the truth. Yeah. And, and now, and you know, if you think about this, you know, you've been, you've been in it for eight years. So I've been in it, you know, quite a bit longer than that. There wasn't a lot of substrates. Back then, there was not yeah. a lot of substrates. Like mugs, coasters, handful of keychains, some photo panels. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, and there were, you know, yeah, and and you know, they had like the mouse pads and oh, yeah. you know, mouse pads were you know, stuff. I mean, yeah, but the, there's a plethora, literally, of of substrates today. That you, I mean, if you can think of it, it's, it, it's possible <laughs> just about, you know, I mean, oh, because yeah. somebody is coming up with it, somebody is doing it, somebody is offering it, you know, yeah. so it, we're not limited. We're only limited by our imagination and that's yeah. it. You know, it's, it's just, and, and I think that that's the other thing that comes with um, the sublimation summit is inspiration networking, mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing people take off. They literally, it's like, and you know, in the video, one of the ladies said, I've learned more in one hour than I, I 
you know, than I did in the whole time I've been doing it or something to yeah. that effect. <laughs> I feel like and, it's like strapping a jetpack onto your journey. Like if you're at the starting line of this race, put on a jetpack, you know, get yeah. started. And I guess if I can ask you, so Sublimation Summit, would you recommend it for somebody with zero knowledge starting out? Is it like, okay, 100%. for ultra beginners? 100%. Oh. Okay. Nice. So we always tailored it to... Um, beginners and advanced. We had classes for everyone and we have multiple classes per hour so that everyone can find what, you know, something for themselves and in, in those classes. It's um, again, I think it's um, if you believe in something um, that, you know, will take you, if you will, you want to start a business. You don't know what to do. You, you know, you've got sublimation. You want to start a business. You don't know what to do. We're going to have business classes at the summit. We're going to have, and we do. And, you know, we're, we're having, because we want people to, there are people who just want to do it as a hobby. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is. Yeah. I started it as a hobby and, and a lot of people start as a hobby. And then it, you know, it grows legs and takes off. And now all of a sudden they're selling and they're, you know, they're on Etsy and they're, you know, they're yep. making a small little fortune every single month. And it's awesome. And, uh, you know, there are people who that's all they will ever want to do is a hobby. And that's okay. Well, Cheryl, I feel like you've shared so much, like, seriously awesome insight into our industry today. So before we go, I have to ask, where do you see the sublimation industry like today? Like, where do you feel like it's at? Maybe where it's going? Yeah. So I feel like it's um, actually stabilizing. Um, we had such a growth due to COVID, people staying home, you know, um, people buying these little printers that, you know, the sawgrass printers and starting a little thing at home, you know, hoping to make some money because they weren't working. And then you started to see a drop because people actually had to go back to work. And that was, you know, that was tough. Right. And, and I think the, you know, when they got hit with the $300, Oh, $300 in ink. Ouch. Like, out. <laughs> and I think that that really hurt, you know, because I think we saw this uh, amazing rapid growth with people, just an influx of people getting into sublimation. And, um, and then it started tapering off and a little more and a little more and a little more, because again, I think people just had to go back to work and life had to happen. And, um, but I think, I think honestly, um, if I were a betting woman and I could be definitely a risk taker, um, I would tell you that the best is yet to come. And, yes. um, and I seriously believe that I think there is no process that gives you what sublimation can give you. I mean, it is, there is so much, there's so much that, um, you can offer that you can tailor that you can custom do for your customers that there's just nothing like it. There really is nothing. Um, and so I think that we are headed in some amazing times ahead and I'm excited to take this ride, you know, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel the exact same way when, because of course, you know, lately, and especially lately with, you know, the big DTF juggernaut that it is, it's like a huge tidal wave that hit, you know, the U.S. garment decoration industry. But I think once people realize that, like, it's great for what it is, but if you still want to offer hard surfaces, if you still want to do the things that only sublimation can do, you have, where else are you going to go? So yes, I'm, I'm with you on that. And I'm excited to see where the industry goes and the, and the colors and the vibrancy oh, and all yeah. the stuff that just like it comes to life and, you know, just, you know, peeling off that paper and seeing it, it's like, oh my God, 
Oh my God, I can't believe this. It just looks <laughs> amazing. I get excited for my customers. I'm not kidding you because I know yeah. that that reaction is going to be like my reaction when I, you know, I peeled off that paper and went, oh my God, this is gorgeous. So yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's, it's just an exciting process that I think few things actually give us. I mean, you know, there are, and there's many and there's, I just think that they're compliments to sublimation. They don't take away, yeah. I think they're compliments. I think the DTF will be a compliment to sublimation that people will come back. It's just, that's the new and exciting wave right now. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like going home, you know, you go on vacation and it's like, yay, we're going on vacation, yay. <laughs> but you always want to go back home, right? <laughs> and that's, <Yeah. laughs> to me, that's the sublimation. They're going to come back home. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I love it. Before we let you go, please do me a favor. If you could just tell our viewers and listeners, like where can they find you? Where could they find sublimation summit online? Okay. Well, it's sublimation summit.com. And um, my Facebook group is um, um, sublimation for beginners and beyond. And um, there's three of them. So you have to look for the pretty colors, the pink and the purple, and it says learn create sublimate that's my group <laughs> and it's a fun group and it's uh, you know um a lot of knowledge and a lot of just some really good resources in there so i love you. it Cheryl, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast today i really want to thank you for for taking your time uh, yeah. i know you're a busy woman you got a lot going on you got sublimation <laughs> summit coming around the virtual summit yeah coming soon fall 2024 yeah yeah it's exciting it is it is really exciting and um yeah i'm writing some articles and doing all kinds of things on the side that's just like huh okay i've got time sure <laughs> <laughs> but well this has been absolutely a pleasure for me too i have really enjoyed it and thank you for having me for asking me wow. this has been great Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Customizing Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Barbosa. And today, very special guest has been Cheryl Kuchek uh, with yeah. Sublimation Summit and more. <laughs> we'll see you all around, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Take care.